Hello, friends and family from around the world. This is Mike with Daily Events Worldwide, and we are on April 14th, 2025. Welcome to another surviving day on the planet, and welcome to the Daily Do, giving you your space weather update as well earthquakes, volcanoes, and world weather. Starting out here looking at our sun for the past two days, we did have those large plasma filaments that were Earth facing, Earth directed large plasma filament eruptions created coronal mass ejections heading our way. Right now we have three sunspot regions. So the sunspots are low, but the plasma filaments are numerous and even crusting into view. There are more turning in from the other side of our sun. As well, an interesting and sizable sunspot region. Here is our most active sunspot region outgoing created most of the M-class solar flares the past two days, which we've seen over a dozen of them. Highly active sunspot region just all of a sudden became very active, turning away though. Multispectrum pointing out the last 48 hours of events. And as well, the plasma filaments, which we still have to watch, they could snap at any time. Southern Hemisphere darkened regions, coronal holes, and the magnetic field of our sun during the coronal hole bottom left. Amazing images here brought to you by Solar Dynamics Observatory mixed with daily events worldwide. Thank you so much for pressing play today. And please don't forget to subscribe, give a thumbs up, and maybe share with your friends and family who might be interested in all this information shared and prepared. During Solar Cycle 25, looking at these sunspot regions right now in fluid motion, Sizable sunspot region and active, turning away. But there is another one cresting into view in the last few images. So stay tuned to Daily Events Worldwide, keeping you updated. Currently, we have three sunspots that are Earth-facing. 4060 is primed, ready to go, and a big one is cresting into view. Current space weather conditions, we are under R1, minor radio blackout impacts, from the M-class solar flares that we weren't directly hit by, but our solar winds are coming in at 418 kilometers per second, just under 420. Solar X-ray flux showing a strong M-class solar flare and multiple moderate M-class solar flares the past two days. It's been pretty busy. Solar proton flux is low. Geomagnetic activity sitting at a KP3 right now. And here's a look at these CME models that are on their way. Well, the first one, anyway. You can kind of see the other event in behind it. Expected arrival late on the 15th into the 16th. So tomorrow. And your Aurora forecast for tonight is definitely going to give us a show tomorrow night. So hopefully the skies will be clear. There's a look at the solar storm that is on its way. That was an Earth-directed plasma filament eruption that created it. Here we are observing all of the CMEs since April 11th, the past three days. We saw the sun-diving comet coming in from the southwest region of the sun. And then full halo CME from the plasma filament eruption. This is a look at LASCO-3 wide spectrum all the cosmic energies leaving our sun the past three days. Next expected solar event is tomorrow. Looking at tonight's Aurora for a view line and tomorrow's very strong likelihood of Aurora Borealis for tomorrow night all across Canada and most of the northern United States. Parts of Ontario, I'm sure we'll see it as well. Hoping parts of southern Ontario Right now, it looks to be north, though. Now, let's get to earthquakes past 24 hours. This deep, pretty deep earthquake just struck Indonesia, Batang, Indonesia, 556 kilometer depth, very close to the Krakatoa volcano. Anak Krakatoa now, the baby. It's gone quiet in Fiji. Notable 4.9 here, southern east Pacific Ridge. Yesterday's earthquake, Caribbean. Here is where all of the energy is centered. Julian, California, reporting a 5.2 magnitude earthquake about six hours ago, followed by multiple aftershocks. Observing an earthquake swarm 
as USGS is reporting 380 earthquakes the past 24 hours, and 130 of them have been in Julian, California, right after the 5.2 magnitude earthquake struck. A sparsely populated region at best, but all across California, we've seen even parts of the border. We've got Ferndale, California, and the border with Canada, a Soyuz 2.5. Got activity in Stanley, Idaho, very widespread across the Pacific Northwest. And then you get to California in the mountainous regions. And again, sparsely populated, but to the West, heavily populated. I'm sure a lot of people were feeling and looking at things shaking off their walls with this 5.2. Multiple aftershocks reporting 127 earthquakes in the past 24 hours just in this region. So what's going on in California? Well, there's been lots of activity right up the San Andreas Fault for the past month now. We're going to get into more detailed earthquakes tomorrow. Let's carry on here with the last 24 hours for earthquakes. Minor seismicity increasing through Alaska. And very eerily quiet across the other side of the planet. African plate up into the Arabian And even up into Iceland and the Wanda Fuca plate, which I mentioned yesterday. We're going to be watching and waiting for this energy to shift from California northward along the coast. So heads up, BC, British Columbia, and as well Washington, all along your coastline over the next 24 hours. Considering what has been going on for the past two weeks, all of the deep earthquakes, and as well the space weather events that our planet has been undergoing. It ain't over. Something bigger is coming. Stay prepped. Hashtag no fear here. Just aware and prepared. Now let's have a look at the SO2 forecast. Sulfur dioxide emissions brought to you by active and erupting volcanoes around the world. Right now that we know of, we have 75 active and erupting volcanoes around the world. Notable there all across the Pacific Ring of Fire. And as well, central regions of Africa, big eruption in Philippines, eastern Indonesia, western Indonesia, Papua New Guinea, New Caledonia, even quite a few plumes coming out of the southeastern continent of Australia. Pretty quiet over here, but notable regions, West Africa and North now let's have a look at world weather, brought to you by windy.com. Snowy system invading parts of eastern Canada and as well northeastern United States. Winter is not quite over yet. Huge high pressure ridge needs to break down off that west coast. It's going to keep pushing all these lows straight north over the Rockies and keep funneling down the polar vortex, which has been lingering and it's gaining strength in the southern hemisphere. Having a look at world weather overlooking Europe, most of the United States and Canada, dry until about the 28th or 29th, and if you get any moisture, it might be snow. Stay tuned to the daily forecasts. Having a look here overlooking Africa, Australia, pretty strong system heading into New Zealand this week. Expecting an impact Wednesday into Thursday. Days upon days of rain, and as well a couple cyclones twirling around Northern Territory of Australia. South Africa, watch for heavy rains as well. And strong systems scooting out of China, racing up into the um, into Alaska and the Aleutian Islands. It's not really breaking down the high pressure ridge just yet over the Central Pacific. And I think Kilauea eruption has a lot to do with that. Wait for another episode coming up soon from Kilauea and look at that strong system develop just north of it in the long-range forecast. That might be the one that breaks down the high-pressure ridge. We'll see. Something else I wanted to share here with you today is the massive iceberg that is in the South Atlantic Ocean 
just west of the South Sandwich Islands, Georgia. Look at the size of this thing. Now, when I measured this a few months ago, it wasn't here just yet, and it was 3,000 kilometers square. It lodged itself quite a while ago. Let's go back to March. May I be the beginning of March? No, it's still lodged. So this thing was traveling around the current in the South Atlantic Ocean for quite some time, and I've been monitoring it, made a couple videos about it. But you can see here, the middle of February, it started moving eastward towards the South Georgia and South Sandwich Islands before right around the beginning of March, it gets stuck on the ocean floor. Right about there, you can see the waves and clouds as it was act it's so huge, it was breaking the surface level clouds. This thing is massive. And now an ice chunk has broken off the bottom left hand quadrant. Watch over the next month as it is stuck here from March 4th. And then right up until about, well, just April 12th is when this most recent chunk broke off of this massive iceberg. A chunk that broke off is about 83 kilometers square. Here's a look at it on the 11th. And there it is on the 12th. As you can see, it has literally broken off and moved south of the massive iceberg that is lodged on the ocean floor. Give a quick measurement here. Look at that. 77 square kilometers. Just a massive chunk of ice. And it's already broken in half. Looking at satellite imagery there. Strong winds in the southern hemisphere. Just some very interesting images I wanted to share with you. Massive iceberg breaking up in the South Atlantic. Thanks for watching today. Hope you enjoyed the show. Stay aware and prepared. Stay young and have fun and get your daily do. Bye-bye now. Thank you.